All right, everybody, welcome back to another Arena Football Nation YouTube video. And in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the National Arena League 2024 season league and team preview, or I should say season. And uh, first off, first and foremost, Happy New Year to everyone out there who watches these videos. I hope you have a healthy and amazing 2024. I know it's shaping up to be a very great year for arena and indoor football. A lot of football going to be played, a lot of action, a lot of teams, good assortment of leagues out there. So just really excited to have you here with us and uh, as we go through and enjoy the sport we love. All right, now that out of the way, we're going to have a very different year when it comes to 2024 for the National Arena League. Uh, it goes without saying, this is going to be the most excited league, or the most excited league I will be for, uh, just because it's a complete revamp. Everybody besides Carolina is gone from last year. And I mean, it was just, I, I honestly thought the National Arena League was done. I've been following it since inception, and uh, there's been a lot of turnover with members. Membership has always been kind of a sticking point with a lot of fans and NAL, uh, you know, memberships. So <clears throat> it's uh, not uncommon to have a lot of turnover from year to year. Uh, but this year was definitely worse than in the past. You had mainstay, you know, clubs like the Albany Empire who were revitalized and went through a complete, you know, insanity they, they just uh, kind of dissolved halfway through the season. You had uh, Antonio Brown taking over the team and just burning it to the ground for lack of a better word <laughs> for words. But, um, you know, the, losing them was really rough. You really want to see the Albany Empire around. They, they're a fantastic historic franchise, and just uh, seeing that happen to them was terrible. You had the uh, Columbus Lions. They, they're no longer part of the NAL, and they were a uh, founding member. You had uh, the Fayetteville Mustangs, you know, hope we were hoping good things for them, for, for that franchise, and uh, <clears throat> fan engagement just wasn't there. You know, I, I think maybe with time and, you know, some more uh, PR and getting the word out, the fans would eventually start coming, but, you know, they left, dissolved. Uh, and then the Sharks, one of the, you know, the, the biggest anchor team of the league, you know, the, definitely the most fan uh, fans showing up the games, you know, one of the bigger franchises, you know, def definitely a keystone part of the NAL. They leave and go to the IFL. Uh, I think they just got had enough of it. It's all the writing on the wall and we're tired of essentially in my eyes, carrying the NAL. And, um, I think with, uh, with what was happening with all the other teams leaving, they just said, you know, we're in a good state that we can make this move. Uh, I th always thought the IFL was going to be a uh, location that they'd be going to, to eventually. With it being just the biggest and premier indoor football league in the nation. So they end up leaving, going to the IFL. <clears throat> and then, of course, you have the Orlando Predators. They uh, they left. They dipped and went to the new AFL. So really uh, curious to see how they're going to do. Will, the, will their uh, fan engagement increase once you know they're back in the AFL? I feel like they're one of those franchises that you did you see that logo, the AFL logo, and the name, and they're you know just Mayweather fans in my eyes. You can look at the soccer landscape, you can look at all the other land, sports landscapes, and it's like you have this really solid, you know, quote unquote minor league franchise playing, and they're they're doing you know really well, ran really well, but they don't get the fans' engagement, and they don't have the fans come and support them, and the next thing you know. You've, we've seen this a lot in MLS here in the United States, and then they'll get a you know MLS franchise, and then all of a sudden all the fans show up, just out you know crazy amount of fans start coming. I don't know, that's just a little side tangent. Sorry, but it just bothers me. And then of course you have this San Antonio Gunslingers. They left and went to the IFO, tagged along with the Jacksonville Sharks. Uh, bigger and better things in my eyes. <clears throat> They're a really solid franchise. Great ownership. I think they have a good fan base. I think they're going to get even better once they're in the IFL. 
And um, yeah, great things are on the horizon for them. I think they have a you know really solid foundation. You know, they got a, a really great coach over there now and making some good signings. So I think uh, San Antonio is going to do really well this year. And then, of course, the West Texas Warbirds. Um, they end up going to the Arena Football League as well. This was a bit of a surprise. I didn't see them being chosen by the AFL as a team that would be wanted in the AFL. I, I mean, West Texas doesn't have a massive fan base. And I don't mean this, you know, disparagingly to anybody who watches these videos. I'm just being honest from what the, I see when I watch the games. They don't have a packed house. So I'm, I'm, I'm not saying y'all are a bad fan base at all. I mean, I, I support all fan bases. I support all teams. But uh, I just think it was one of those instances, just like when the AFL snagged up a bunch of those Midwestern teams. They're just trying to get whatever they could get. And uh, that's what I think with West Texas. I, I wish no ill will. Hopefully West Texas has a great season and does well in the Arena Football League. But as you know, uh, or may not know, they actually changed their name to the West Texas Desert Hawks. And... Um, I have no idea why they did that. The only thing I can think of is they're trying to get out of a contract with the NAL. And uh, they had to change their name to get out of it. I don't know. I'm just guessing shooting spitballs at the wall. But yeah, that's that's uh, what's, what's going on with West Texas. So that was the uh, overturn. A lot of loss. Like I said, I thought the NAL was done for. The Carolina Cobras are the only team left standing. And then something I thought should have happened a long time ago. We had expansion. Some crazy good expansion. You had the Sioux City Bandits, Omaha Beef, and then Topeka Tropics all jump ship from the sinking um, league they're in and finally come on over to NAL. I, I, these franchises are, you know, really solid franchises um, and Sioux City and Omaha for sure. Historic franchises. And I just, I thought it was a matter of time before they joined either the IFL, NAL, or you know, one, yeah, one of the two. I mean, those are the two premier big French or leagues, you know, in the uh, arena football, arena or indoor football landscape. So uh, th those all three came. Then you had the Idaho Horsemen, you know, really far out west, technically, with this geography landscape. They even uh, joined up. And now that was another, I was like, a matter of time. This is such a big, you know, at, for what they are out in Idaho, they're, they're the biggest premier essentially franchise out west you know you don't have the uh, what is it the um, Spokane Shock out there anymore there's no other teams that we knew of obviously so I mean Idaho that's, that's another big pickup for the NL and then you had the Flying Aces from Oklahoma they're revitalized coming back and they're joining and then North Texas Bulls so there you go here's the map as you can see this whole time on the page you got eight solid franchises, I hope, that will stick. And Oh, I'm sorry. And Colorado Spartans. I think I might have missed them. Colorado Spartans is a new franchise. And, um, yeah, I, I think, you know, hopefully they'll do well. They're one of those franchises that we get that come out of nowhere, out of the blue. And then halfway through the season, kind of like Fayetteville, halfway through the season they fall apart because they don't have the, you know, capital or they don't have the fan engagement, whatever it may be. Hopefully they do really well. I'm seeing a lot of good things. They had some signings. Uh, looks like they have a solid foundation when it comes to the ownership. So hopefully they'll stick around and uh, survive, prove uh, or change the recurring theme with these franchises that are you know, new, not a you know stand long-standing one like Omaha or Sioux City or Idaho. But anyways, so back to what we're saying. Uh, yeah, it looks like a this is a new era for the NAL. Uh, I think once you had all those teams leave, especially Jacksonville, uh, Orlando, Columbus, once you had all those mainstay franchises, those household names leave, I, I think this is just a whole new era. This is NAL 2.0 in my eyes. And uh, it's going to be really exciting because outside of Omaha, maybe, and Carolina's pretty solid as well. Sioux City, you can never count them out. Outside of those, you know, it's kind of wide open, honestly. You don't got no Jacksonville, no Albany. No other big premier franchise that has a ton of spending money and gets all these signings. I think this is going to be a great season. This is the most excited Arena Football League that, or this is the Arena Football League that I'm most excited for. Excuse me. Because I, for one, I don't have a team in it. 
So it is, I don't care who wins. I'm, I'm not pulling for anybody, really. Um, so it's just going to be fun to be a fan of football, arena football, and just sit back and watch. And, uh, yeah, I just think it's wide open. I think a lot of these teams are going to be all around the same level unless someone pulls away, you know, midway through the season, really goes on a tear, and, you know, and becomes the team to beat. I'm really excited to see how this turns out. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, with Carolina being the last, you know, left team from the old guard, as you would say, do they just pick up where they left off and they become the new titans of the league and then everybody's having to knock them off? Or does Omaha and Sioux City continue their historic long-standing rivalry and come in and just take control or take the league by the horns, <laughs> pun intended, and uh, just start owning this league? Or are you going to have just a someone out of nowhere like Idaho or Colorado or North Texas just come in and they start dominating? It's totally wide open. You have no idea what's going to happen. So that's why I'm so excited for the NAL 2.0. And I think this is going to be, to my, in my eyes, the most exciting league playing this year. Uh, I'm excited for all leagues for sure. But I'm really excited to see how this all turns out. So anyways, we'll get a real, uh, like we've done before, we'll go through a real, real quick look at the uh, schedule. First game, it looks like, is going to be Friday, March 15th. And it's going to be the Topeka Tropics versus the Sioux City Bandits. 710 Central Standing Time at the Tyson Events Center. So, yeah, this is going to be a carryover from the uh, CIF. These, these are old foes in the Champions Indoor Football League. So, uh, you know, new league, you know, ter- you know, new era. Let's see who uh, comes out on top to start this off. You also have the Carolina Cobras and the Idaho Horsemen, you know, right from the get go playing. This is going to be in Idaho. And it's going to be Friday, March 15th as well at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So this one's really interesting as well for me because Carolina is going to literally travel all the way across the country. You know, you're know, you not going to be on the coast, but you're pretty close with Idaho. <laughs> One state over. And uh, they're going to face the Idaho Horsemen. So, Excuse me, I'll take a drink of water. <laughs> so, um, yeah, what is Carolina going to be able to handle that kind of travel? and play at a high competitive level we'll see it's going to be some of the most long distance travel i can remember in the nal unless i'm just forgetting some something else but and then idaho how do they test themselves against the runner up in last year's national running league championship in the carolina cobras it's gonna be a really exciting game i can't wait to watch that one you know it's really going to do a lot of tells for the whole season you know, what kind of club is, or what kind of franchise is Carolina going to be? Or Idaho? How do they stack up against each other? It's really exciting stuff. So that Saturday, March 16th, you'll have the Colorado Spartans take on the North Texas Bulls and the Crowtown Coliseum. So, you know, really uh, just a, just another exciting thing. These are, North Texas has been a met around for, uh, I want to say, 2020s when they're founded. So they've been around since 2020, and they've, they've been you know, pretty successful in the lower leagues. So it's really exciting to see how they're going to turn out you know, here up in the NAL. And of course, Colorado is a uh, expansion franchise, brand new. So it's going to be exciting to see how they turn out. And then there's the rest of the games. As you can see, excuse me, you can go on the NAL website to look this up. And of course, you're going to have you know, some really big um, premier games happening throughout the year um and you're gonna close out saturday june 8th with everybody one two three four five, six, yeah, everybody playing everybody idaho at north texas you got sioux city take on the flying aces of oklahoma topeka taking on omaha and carolina taking on colorado so there you go there's the whole schedule like i said you can go to the NAL website that's where i'm on you can see the schedule or you can, you know, just pause the video at any moment and take a peek. But, uh, yeah. So, uh, we'll go quick, real quickly over the teams and then win this video. Try to keep it a shorter one. So, of course, you got Carolina Cobras. They play at Greensboro, North Carolina. I should have did all this before I went on the other talking points, but oh well. <laughs> it's been a minute since I did a video. So, uh, I'm kind of out of whack, but hey, I appreciate you watching nonetheless. 
If you like this kind of content, if you want to continue to support the channel, please leave a like and subscribe. I'm going to start pumping out videos here soon. Got a lot of content. I'm ready to get back on the roll. You know, start this new year off right and start, you know, just putting out this content. So uh, I have a lot of things in store. And uh, if you want to continue to support me or the channel or you want to follow along this content, go ahead and leave us a subscribe and uh, follow along. Anyways, current members, Carolina Cobras play at Greensboro, North Carolina at the Greensboro Coliseum, capacity of 12,000. They were founded in 2017, joined the league in 2018, and the head coach is Brandon Nedron. Then you have the uh, expansion franchise Colorado Spartans. They play at Loveland, Colorado, out of the Blue Arena, capacity of 7,500. They were founded in 2023, joined 2024, and their head coach is Fred Shaw. So good things for Fred Shaw. I'm excited to see how he does out there. Next up, we got the Idaho Horsemen. And uh, they play out of Nampa, Idaho, in the Ford Idaho Center. 12,279 is the capacity. They were founded in 2018. Joined the league in 2024. And their head coach is Chris Reynolds. Next up, we got the North Texas Bulls. They play out of Fort Worth, Texas, in the Crowtown Coliseum. Capacity of 3,418. Founded in 2020, joined in 2024, and their head coach is Victor Mann. Next up, you got the Oklahoma Flying Aces. They play out of Enid, Oklahoma, and the Chisholm Trail Coliseum. A capacity of 8,000. Founded in 2018, joined the league in 2024. That's another expansion franchise. Well, I'm sorry, not an expansion franchise. They've been around since 2018. And, um... I'm just, I'm, I haven't seen him play in a minute, so I, that's why I thought that. But anyways, Richard Davis, head coach. Next up is Omaha Beef. They play out of Omaha, Nebraska, and the Liberty First Credit Union Arena. Capacity is 4,600. They were founded in 2000. That is correct. This is one of the most historical franchises in all of arena slash indoor football. They have been around a minute. And, um, you know, a lot of championships, a lot of uh, good things. Really excited to see Omaha in the NAL join in this year, and their head coach is Mike Tatum. Next up, you got the Sioux City Bandits, another historic franchise. They've been around since 2000. They play out of Sioux City, Idaho, or sorry, Sioux City, Iowa, the Tyson Events Center, with a capacity of 6,941. Like I said, found in 2000, and they join in 2024. Irv Strong Strobin. Irv Strobin. I hope I pronounced that right. I apologize if I did not. That's a very unique last name. Next up and lastly, Topeka Tropics. They play at Topeka, Kansas at the Stormont Vale Event Center. Capacity of 10,000. So that's crazy. They have a huge capacity of their arena. Founded in 2022 and joined 2024. And Kerry Lachlan is the head coach. So yeah, there you go. That is the national arena league landscape for 2024 like i said really excited for this season really excited for the nal 2.0 it's gonna be a lot of great football and uh you know i really am excited to see who comes out on top of this will it be the long-standing old guard carolina cobras or will the omaha beef come in and continue their dominance picking up where they left off or will it be just another team coming out of the shadows you got the Idaho Horsemen, Aces, Bulls, Topeka, or Colorado, or will Sioux City get over the hump and defeat their neighbors to the west in the Omaha Beef and claim their uh, <laughs> and claim their own championship in a new league? So yeah, all right, everybody, that'll do it for this video. I really appreciate you watching it to this point. Like I said, going to have a lot of content coming in the future. I'm going to cover the uh, IFL as well. And then uh, take a look at the uh, Arena Football League, another uh, league that popped up that only has four teams right now. Just noticed them, and I figured I'd make a video on them as well. But it uh, looks like a lot of cool things coming out of that league. So there's just so much coming. So much football. You know, we'll, we'll cover all of it, have watch alongs. Going to have, you know, all kinds of good stuff. I'm even thinking of covering the new UFL at Spring Football League. I know this channel is mostly arena and indoor football, but let me know what y'all think about that. I'll have a video posted of that as soon as well. See the reception of that. I think it's just something uh, 
some more spring football action to cover that i think it'll be exciting but anyways thank you all i really appreciate you watching the video like i said like and subscribe and continue to support the channel as we grow and get a lot of content coming all right everybody like i said have a blessed and amazing 2024 i'll see you in the next video bye